Ah, oh, there you go. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Good aboard. Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome aboard, you know. Welcome aboard. Yeah, man. So, you know, it's crazy. You know, it's, uh, I, I got to say, it's like seeing, finally having a live stream with you. I know I was like, I was like, man, I, I got to do a show with her, you know, because it's so creative. You're, you're very, you're very creative. Very creative. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to start off by just saying that, you know. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure what that means, but I'll no. take it. Yeah, no, I mean, as a compliment, you know, I mean, as a compliment. Um, so everybody, just so you know, Lily, uh, she's been like, all over the news and uh she she basically did a video that went super viral where she said the n-word in my view it, it she didn't mean it in a racist way and then she got called out for it in my view she probably thought it was a mistake it she didn't mean it but she also didn't want to be bullied she wanted her freedom to say what she wanted and uh and that that got pretty that went that went nuclear, right? Like that, that got like a hundred million views in like in the last like month or two or a billion or yeah. something. I mean, it it really like set off a, a cultural shift in our in our country almost. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like it was like, how dare you do that? You know, and um, but in my heart, and correct me if I'm in the floor, I'm about to ask you, in my heart, you didn't come off like you you, you didn't come off like a racist to me. I, that, that's just my personal. My personal right but, well but, that's what it wasn't intended that way obviously it was just like the word was basically the same as i would use dude you know i was just talking about guys in general but it's one of those things it's like you can't there's certain lines that apparently you can't cross um and yeah i don't like to be bullied i don't like to be told what to do and i'm not apologizing for something i didn't do wrong you know or that i'm not sorry for <laughs> yeah 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 and then, and then you know the, the the next thing i was like really intrigued by you know, clearly I'm a, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I am a Jewish guy, you know, and uh, my family's from Israel and Iran. And, um, mm -hmm. and then I remember how you were getting attacked for being a Jew and uh, you're not even a Jew. You know? no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new trendy thing right now. Like everybody gets obsessed with certain things at, during different times or whatever. So that happens to be the trendy word of the day. I think that's, that's all there is to it. And so, so then I saw that you actually, uh, you actually worked with a Jamaican lady, right? Like, so, so, mm -hmm. so, so you were actually working with a black lady and, and uh, she, yeah. she, she probably knows you're not a racist also. So how did that oh, go yeah. after everything happened? Like how, how is it between you and that person now? Well, it was one of those things like she, she definitely like had my back cause she knew, you know, me and her got on really well and uh, she knew it wasn't anything bad. She watched the video. She was like, yeah, I don't see what the big deal is. It's not even anything bad, but no, we still, well, we still get on and it was one of those things like I'm, I wasn't trying to like ruin her company because when this kind of thing happens like hundreds of thousands of people you know are leaving bad comments leaving bad reviews trying to ruin the company so I was like you know the rest of the board was like we got to get this girl out of here but she did have my back so we have a good relationship even to now and I don't there's no hard feelings you know it happens yeah so so like after this took off like after this whole thing so so you were just initial how long have you been creating videos by the way, like on TikTok. I mean, I had made like always been like on social media and stuff, just making like typical, just girly content. It wasn't anything like political or whatever. But about a month or two ago, I had decided I was like, I'm just going to make consistent videos of just like random things, just ranting about, you know, cultural issues, maybe some politics thrown in in there here and there. But yeah, I, I just recently started making them consistently. But before that, it was just, you know, fun videos not nothing political nothing like i wasn't trying to be a content creator i i'll tell you like the more they were attacking you like some of those like uh to me they have a very trashy mindset these some of these guys and uh i remember seeing that uh that that veteran with like i don't know if he has ptsd or some psychological issues lucas gage he was attacking you and and then he was attacking you and then i i, I personally took offense because not only was he saying you were a jew but you also dated an iranian I'm so I'm just there like fuck this guy's if this guy's disrespecting me up and down the up and down the street you know what I mean <laughs> like you know like it's like you know it's it's but it's just uh you know I just thought like it was almost like they wanted you as a you know as like a pure blue eyed white you know skin mm -hmm. blonde they want you to be the face of hate I feel like so it was like for you to dare step out at all within that line 
you can't be their mascot because you're not a purebred uh, racist. You know, like they would want Which you. Which is ironic because of the fact that whenever I went up to like APAC and whatever, I was one of the only white people there. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Wait a minute. You guys are trying to throw me under the bus. And, and I'm the only actually white person there, <laughs> but yeah. it's whatever. It's all a clown world. It's all ridiculous. All these people, like they have their little clubs and whatever, and they want you to either, they want you to be a part of those clubs. And if you don't, if you don't like kiss their ass or whatever, then they're like, get this girl out of here. We got to take her down. So it, it doesn't matter. I don't care what your club is. I don't want to be in it. You know, I've got my own thing going on. I like to be independent that's the way it is. But a lot of people do not take that very well, clearly. I met Nick Fuentes uh, maybe about a year ago. And I, I knew right away he was a little bit of a tinkle, twinkle toe, you know, <laughs> the way he looked at me in person. Mm -hmm. You can tell he liked uh, darker guys. That's the irony of this whole situation, you know. So it's, uh, I don't know, he's, he just came off very soft, like very feminine, you know. Mm -hmm. His name will be Nicole in jail, in prison, you know, like he, <laughs> people will call him Nikki, Nicole. I mean, he seems like a Nicole to me, you know, <laughs> like, no, really, you know, and, and then like the way they were attacking you, I, I was just there. Like one good thing about Elon Musk and Rumble is that they let you go all the way. So I was just, yeah. thinking, you know, and I was just thinking to myself, they're showing America. They're just showing America how much vile disrespect they have for women. Like they're not winning over the women. You know what I mean? They're just not like it's like they might be winning over a very fringe number of women. But when you talk about like a, a society, the way they were, the way they were with you, it was like it, to me, it was a little bit vindictive of like, I was like, OK, so these guys really are bigots. You know, it wasn't just me. They attacked as a Jew, but I saw them attacking you. And I was just thinking to myself, I was like, wow, these guys. And I remember this, the stream with, uh, and I've done and I, and the, the X space that you guys did. And mm -hmm. I, I thought to myself, I was like, the way they're attacking you, they have a very, the, the, the groipers, the gayers, they have a very simple tactic. And what that mm -hmm. tactic is, they have a telegram group. They use a telegram group and they use a ton of bots. Not to mention they're probably backed by foreign assets in like a country like China or Qatar that ample, that basically boosts their numbers with likes, follows, retweets, shares, followers. They they get a lot of support like that because of the divisive content that it has and the misinformation that they push. So, for example, the way they attacked you was to shame you into oblivion. Now, first of all, they say to you like, oh, you're a single mom. You know, I'm a, I'm a married man. You know, I got a daughter. Maybe one day my daughter does it. Maybe she gets pregnant and the guy's not around. I don't, wouldn't want to be in a society where, you know, she's shamed into oblivion because things happen. I, my mother, my, my, my mom and dad broke about, I had a single mom myself and uh, from about five to 14. And it's hard, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's working long hours. My mom worked on the weekends and the evenings just to get me like basic things. And, I felt like the, the vile nastiness that they were showing you where you were literally on an X space by yourself with like 15 of these guys who are, let's just be honest, they probably looked as dorky as most people would imagine. Right. Yeah. I can't really yeah, argue yeah. with that. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they, they probably really like, these are most of these guys are the sort of guys that let's just be honest. Like you would probably not even talk to them at a nightclub. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the sort of guys that like, they would want to talk to you in the nightclub. They would get rejected by you in the nightclub. But now is their opportunity to get revenge on Lily. And not just Lily, for all the girls that look like Lily that rejected them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know? the thing that, that it was a whole thing. It was like, I went up there cause I didn't know any of these people. I didn't know about these groups or whatever. And go up there with an open mind, you know, I, and they have valid points. It's not like I'm, you know, bashing that. And I'm not wanting to throw everybody under the bus either. But I'm, my critique was, listen, guys, it's your, your movement's never going to go anywhere if you are, you know, you're so purist in this form of like, you won't let these people in, you won't let these people in, you, you hate on these people, you hate on these people. It's like, no, 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 you're forgetting that your whole movement is America first. And America encompasses a lot of people. That's women. That's, you know, 
people who live in this country who may not look exactly like you or whatever. And I'm like, you got to bring everybody in. But, you know, people, some people don't like critiques or whatever. So, again, I'm not throwing them under the bus. But I wanted I don't want to be part of that club because obviously they're dicks. So, no thanks. And I, and I guess the people that they like to have in their club are people who don't mind taking the abuse. I'm not that kind of person. Like, I'll, I've, I'm a pretty good sport and I'll take it for a, I'll take a friendly hazing. But then there's a line and I'm like, OK, if you're going to try to, like, make up lies about me and just try to take me down then I'm like, I don't want to be associated with people like that because I wouldn't do that to somebody, you know? So it's just, it's very dishonorable at the end of the day. And that's, that's kind of the vibe I got. It was, it was, I just didn't like it. I mean, I, I ha you know, to, to be real, I, I have been called a racist before and uh, I really sat down and thought if maybe I am, uh, but I realized that it could never be true uh, because in college um, I fucked a black chick. You got yeah, your bottle, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I bet you like your chocolate too. So there's no way uh, you could be racist. I mean, to be honest, I've I've only dated white guys, so I wouldn't know really. But I don't think I don't think dating preferences determine whether you're racist or not. I think it's whether you think you're fundamentally a better human being than somebody else. And I'm not, you know, like that's not how I think. I'll make a racist joke or whatever, but I'm not racist, you know. And the whole thing has not even been a racist thing. It's all been about. A fr it's a free speech issue at the end of the day. It's not a racism thing. I didn't view you. You know, I, I mean, I'm not a black guy, but I, I, I didn't view you as a racist, man. I really didn't. I really, yeah. I, I didn't like, I guess it's maybe if you're in the big cities of, of America, you know, you sort of, uh, it was just like, a, I, it just didn't come, I, I think it was overblown what happened to yeah, you. Yeah, I did too. And I think it's crazy that we're like, people freaked out about that. I'm like, there's actually terrible things going on in the world. And that's what you zone in on. That's what millions of people are interested in talking about. Like a video with that's not even anything crazy. But you know, you, you know, I, uh, on June 1st, uh, last month, I did a speech on a serious note, I, I did a speech uh, in London. And it was about yeah. saving uh, Western culture. It was my and uh, Tommy. It was it was an event by Tommy Robinson, and okay. uh, and Tommy Robinson and I uh, we, we've collaborated before uh, on more than one occasion. And uh, oh no, I'm all I'm all good. Thank you. I, I'm at a hotel. I'm all good. No cleaning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. I'm in Miami. Uh, so like. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, so anyway, long story short, I, you know, I, I collaborated him a couple a couple occasions and uh, he's really on the forefront, uh, I, I think, on the West of defending us against the fanaticism that's coming uh, in Europe, where my home is. I married a German woman and uh, my home is in Bochum, Germany, in northwest Germany, about an okay. hour and uh, our one hour flight from Dusseldorf to London. And um, over there, the migrant issue has a different definition you know over there it's uh people from uh the middle east that come right uh, they abuse the social welfare system they disrespect uh the culture they don't have a respect for the culture and right. uh they um i'd say largely they rape a lot there's a lot of rapists they rape a lot yeah. of and it's not so much like uh here in the united states where uh it's it's mexicans who may also share the same faith you know, over there, it's uh, mm -hmm. not the same faith. Right. So, so, so I think that here in the United States, they haven't seen, because as an American expat, I'm, I'm between both countries. And right. I see that the Europeans, they're dealing with another issue than here we are in the United States. Here in the United States, I feel like, and, you, and please tell me where, you know, I know, I know you, you, from what I understand, you like Tommy Robinson for what he did against the child rapist or child woman. Oh, yeah. I don't know really why people throw him under the bus. Like he's he's actually out there on the front lines. Like people are big talk behind a, a screens and whatever, but he's actually gone to jail because of what he's speaking out for. Like he's actually doing something. I like Tommy Robinson. I think he's a great guy. I think he's actually fighting and trying to protect the kids from these gang, you know, these child rape gangs that are going on in London. Yeah, I feel like you and Tom, I would love to put you and Tommy together. Like I feel like, I've spoken with him about you, you know, so I think I think he's somebody that, that you if you ever go to London, for example, I'm no doubt about it. I'm con, I'm sure he would want to he'd want to meet you, you know, and uh, that's pretty cool that you actually knew about him from like a years ago. It wasn't even like mm -hmm. you just kept on the trend like you actually were like paying attention to this stuff years ago. Right. 
Right. Well, it's one of those things. It's kind of like, you know, you, you get on social media and then you start seeing things and you're like, wow, I didn't had no idea this was going on. And then you get invested. But yeah, he was definitely one because the immigration thing like that concerns everybody. You know, it changes your country. It it makes the crime go up and stuff. So I think it's something everybody should be concerned with, honestly. Did you uh so 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 like for example, there's this view like the JQ like the Jewish question and, and please not that I need to tell you to speak freely, I I talk with a wide variety of people. I, I value free speech. It's not you know it's I I, I mean that some of the guys I sp- speak to are vile anti semites you know so it's it's nothing I won't like get angry and then we fight and us I can handle it you know so that being said. Do you think that, you know, the Jewish people have brought in migrants to destroy European culture? Or do you put the blame on the people that have invaded Europe, similar to the people who invaded Israel? Or do you not see it that way? How how do you see it? Okay, so I know there's everybody's got their little views on here and people like to zone in on one particular you know group. Um, I I don't know. I, I guess I have the Alex Jones view of it where I see it it's like a cabal of a couple, like a couple hundred globalists, you know, and they, they're satanic globalists. They've got, they've got, you know, something in mind that they, they, they want to do. And offshoots of that, there's, you know, there's Jewish people, there's the Vatican and the Catholics, there's um, the Muslim influence, there's all, there's Hollywood, there's all these kind of things under this umbrella of these, you know, these few globalists out there that are running the show. So I'm not going to blame like one particular group because I don't think it's just one particular group. I think it's a lot of, um, you know, globalist minded people that are pushing an agenda and they're using useful idiots from all kinds of groups to achieve that in. That's how I see it. So I don't see it as like, and, and again, it's one of those things. It's not like I'm, if Jewish people are involved, just there's a Jewish influence, which I think there's an influence, there's a Jewish influence. I think there's a influence from the Catholic church as well, you know, but I'm not throwing everybody from that group under the bus, but I think there are secular people who have a globalist mindset behind each group there. So that's why I don't really, everybody wants me to be like, Oh, just name the Jew or whatever. But I don't think it's just that, you know, I really don't. I think there's bad players from every group out there and they're all just, you know, they're all working together for a globalist agenda. Before before we did this stream, have you ever talked to a Jew? Um, I'm oh, sure no. I have. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's hard to tell. <laughs> well, so I'm not like the first Jew. I like, am I taking your Jew virginity right now talking to you? No, actually, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I forgot. I talked to, um, yeah. oh my gosh, what is his name? I think it's Adam Friedman. He's been okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I spoke to him and he was cool. But yeah, I get, I like talk to everybody. I don't, you know, it's just retarded to not want to talk to everybody. Cause like you have to have a marketplace of ideas. That's how you get to the truth. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, Adam, Adam Freeman's a nice guy. He's a nice mm-hmm. guy. And, um, you know, I want to tell you, you know, in Israel, uh, have you ever been to Israel? No. Well, if you ever go, it's a beautiful country, a really beautiful country. And, uh, they, they, they really welcome, uh, Christians from the mm-hmm. United States. Now, you may hear things online with some of these people who are vile anti-Semites that they don't. But in, in fact, they actually do. And I think if most people that will see this episode or, you know, see anything, it's like if you're if you're a Christian and uh, you read the Bible and you go back to Israel and you go to Israel to see the sites, the Israelis are very welcoming and appreciative on whole um, because they know that without their Christian allies and friends, they wouldn't, there wouldn't be a country, especially the British, the Germans, the Americans, the, uh, you know, that, that have really helped uh, Israel a lot. And if you look at a lot of the people who have harassed you, if you look at a lot of the people who have been the most vile towards you, I would imagine out of 10 of them, maybe one of them was a Jew. Mm-hmm. Like how many Jews? Yeah. Were, I mean, it's how many, one of those things. It's like, it's, you know, people want to take, people want to attack you or whatever, if you don't want to subscribe to their thing. And I, and I just don't like that worldview. And, and bottom line is I don't really know about like other countries or whatever. I don't really want to know. I just, you know, I'm not a Zionist by any stretch of the imagination because I'm not, I don't want to send money to another country and I don't want to get involved in another country's war. Like all I care about is the country that I live in. So that's how I view it. And I'm sure like, 
again, I don't know about Israel. I don't really know about Jewish people. That's why I don't really talk about it that much. Yeah. All I know is in our country, I'm sick of sending money to Ukraine. I'm sick of sending money to Israel. You know what I mean? I'm just, I don't want money sent to those other countries. Like I wish them all the best, but I don't want to send money and I don't want to send our boys over there because it's never good when you get involved in, you know, foreign wars. I say, just let them fight it out. You know, it's Israel and Palestine, go nuts. You know, Ukraine and Russia, go nuts. But I don't want involved. That's, that's my view on it. Would you, uh, you know, would you, would you ever date a guy who was not uh, blonde, blue eyes? I'm uh, sure. Yeah. Do you think love is colorblind? I mean, here's the thing. Like you have preferences, which you're attracted to, you know, and that's, that does sometimes take into like account what somebody looks like, what, what ethnic background or whatever. So I am, I'm attracted to like blonde hippie guys, but that's just cause I'm kind of a little bit of a hippie myself, but that's just my type. But I mean, if the best person came along and he wasn't like that, then hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I get it, man. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I got my preferences too. I actually, to be honest with you, I, I sort of preferred marrying a Jewish woman, and uh, mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't work out that way. I married a German, and my my wife's grandmother has the Nazi logo on her birth certificate, which is pretty crazy. Uh, when I saw that, uh, that's pretty Dang. pretty German. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's uh, it's pretty. She's pretty like German German. You know, <laughs> like English is not her main language. You know, yeah. Well, we didn't sauerkraut. It's one of those things. Like I, you've always heard, like birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but I think it is nice to have a lot of things in common with the person you marry. You know, yeah, so that's what I would look for. And there are a lot of cultural differences, but I don't know. That's a whole nother conversation. So, so you've only dated uh, black men. I mean, a uh, white. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've only I've only dated white guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you've only ever dated white men. I'd recommend uh, dating a black man. Um, it has its perks. They usually carry <laughs> firearms, so you'll always be protected. Yeah, I will hand it. I I gotta say, like black guys, I don't know what it is, but I feel like black dudes are more high T than your average white dude. Like, I'm not shitting on white people, but I've just kind of like noticed it. There's a lot of white wusses, you know? Yeah, and I mean, then I'm like, dang, what is going on here? Like yeah, I mean, pl 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 you know, plus your kids will be athletic too, which is great so long as you're okay with raising them on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I've already been there, done that. So I'm, I'm going to avoid that again, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man, you know, it's up. Uh, it's just crazy because I think you and I get away with a lot of jokes, but we, we both probably have a lot of, uh, you know, black black supporters. I think they know we're not racist. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My DMs are full of, like, black people like, oh, you are you can say the N-word any day you want. You're not racist. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, man. No. <laughs> I know. But I'll tell you, Nick Fuentes is unique because Nick Fuentes really pushes the hate. And he still has black guys that like Myron that like him. You know, that now that's odd to me. You know, like it's like you and me are just talking about it. But those guys are really, you know, like like Nick Nick has a real obsession with hatred of, of Jews, blacks, just in general. Like he, he has a real like you and me are joke, but he has his, his is fanatical. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can't speak to him because I don't I didn't even meet him up there. Like, I don't know the guy, to be honest. I've never watched his show, but so I don't really know who he is. So, you know, I I can't really comment because I, I have no clue who he is, really. I mean, Nick Fuentes could never imagine being black because he has a micro penis. So oh. that's why he's so. Threatened. Yeah, that's so that's why he's so threatened by African-Americans, you know. Oh, my gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, they hate me because of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so they, they might have panic attacks seeing you with me here. You know, mm -hmm. and just for the record, I'm not her handler. She, she, she just clearly told me she does not support money being sent uh, to Israel in my face. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. this is not like she's chilling for Israel. She's literally just said she does not want money going to Israel, which I support. So, just for the record, yeah. there's no shilling here. We're not colluding. We're not collaborating on sending money to Israel clear disagreement here you know? right. but we're having a human I, I don't get that like i've done yeah. interviews with like muslim guys and i'm very you know I, i'm not i'm very critical of like 
Islam and all that. So it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you can talk to somebody and that doesn't mean you're joining forces with them. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think, uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. Do, do you, do you view, uh, what do you think about the fact that when they say, you know, Jews are, have a lot of power in the media and, uh, and in school and books, do you think, would you support some sort of law to strip Jews of their money and power in media and edu- in government? Would you support some quota of Jews permitted at universities and on the Forbes billionaires list? Or do you think that's silly? <laughs> I'm anti-laws. I'm sick of more law. I'm sick of laws. I'm sick of the government trying to come in and fix things. Anytime the government tries to fix a problem, they make it worse. You know, so it's it's the old question between like um, equality versus equity. That sounds like equity to me. Like you want a quota or whatever. That's the same as how they want to, you know, they want to suppress the Asian students who are getting into Harvard because they're like, we need more, you know, black people or whatever, because we're sick of all these Asians coming in. So let's try to fix this problem. Makes it just worse. All it is is discrimination. All it is is more laws. So I'm anti-law. So if the, if you think there's a problem there, then that sucks. But I'm not about putting in laws to prevent people. That's just stupid. Like that's authoritarian. I'm not into, I hate laws. We need less rules. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how old are you now? If you don't mind me asking. I'm 25. Yeah. I'm 43. And I, and I want you to know, you know, uh, as a guy, you know, uh, that grew up with a single mom, myself, all jokes aside, uh, I, you know, I, I make all sorts of jokes, but I really do have a lot of respect uh, for you, for what you're doing. Uh, my, my, my wife, uh, you know, even with me taking care of her um, and, you know, being the provider and uh, helping her with co-parenting uh, duties. And I know my wife works really hard. You know, I, I feel like I work hard, but there's no doubt about it. She's working 24 seven. Like right now she's with my daughter, even if she's at the pool or something while I'm in the hotel room, uh, it's a nonstop job. And, you know, being, a, I gained a whole new appreciation for mothers because, you know, when, if, if the man, even if the man is there, you know, the husband's sleeping in the same bed with you, mm-hmm. you know, that's tough, let alone being a single mom. Even if, even if the person is sending you child support, or even if they're not, even if they're taking the, the child on the weekend, you know, it's, it's, it's really challenging. But I want to tell you the good news is I think you're very tough and um, I can see that. And I think your son is very fortunate to have, uh, you know, a very smart, intelligent woman who, who seems to have a lot of passion for learning and, and self-improvement. And I think I think you're going to do a great job. Not that you need me to tell you that. So just keep it up. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's actually really sweet. I do appreciate it. But it's yeah. one of those things, you know, like moms, moms need to be more venerated, you know, yeah. they're raising up the next, the next generation that's going to either take the country in one direction or the next. So, you know, it's a good thing. And dads, obviously huge part, big part. So good for you. Yeah, thanks. You know, I try, I try to, you know, what I try to do with my daughter is kiss her a lot and hug her a lot mm-hmm. and uh, play with her a lot, pinch her cheeks. And uh, just because I feel like if I don't, I, I never want her to go to the streets for affection. I never want her to, you know, I never, I never want her to do that. Not, I used to work in New York city nightclubs with fashion models. And, and I remember a lot of girls would come out, they'd be fine. And some girls would come out and they, they, they would look for affection from other guys a little bit too much right. and be sexually promiscuous. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of it also comes not, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, I think it comes from uh, the father uh, being neglectful. I actually put more blame, cast more blame on the shortcomings of a man to not raise his daughter. I, I will say this though, you know, one thing my, my, uh, and I'm not going to ask you any personal question about this guy who, who you had just out of respect. I'm not like the Groypers. You know what I'm saying? Like we just first, this is our first occasion talking. That's just, that's like some of these guys are just complete morons, you know, like these are their kids, they're kids, you know, that they behave like that. But I'll tell you my personal experience with a single mom when my father wasn't around for a while, he just he just couldn't be around uh, for, mm-hmm. for personal reasons. He couldn't be around. He was a great dad when he was around. Uh, my, my, my mom put me in a big brother association. And I had a guy mm-hmm. named Peter Boyer. And he would come and he would play baseball with me. And he would um, take me out. He was a European man. And he would take me out places and uh, help me with my homework. He used to work at a company mm-hmm. called IBM. And, you know, okay. yeah, you know, not having a father – as a boy, you know, it was hard. It was, it was really hard 
And uh, I would say to any single mom that's looking at this, you know, if the, if, if the father is not around or you're not remarried or you don't have, they don't have a stepdad, a big brother association is pretty good. I benefited from mm -hmm. it. I mean, just think, yeah. you know, 30 years later, I can still think of this, this man's name. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good. I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I'm kind of lucky in the fact that I've got like four brothers and oh. they live, yeah, good. they live really close. So they, they're always up here, you know, visiting with him and teaching him how to shoot and fish and all that. So I feel, I feel pretty lucky in that case, but yeah, that's, that's definitely a, that's definitely a good suggestion, honestly, because it is important, you know, for a guy to have like role models and stuff and somebody, a guy to just take them under their wing, you know? Yeah. The thing is, yeah. Yeah. The thing is, is like, if you have big bro, if, if, if he has big brothers, if you have big brothers, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. I, I didn't have that. You know, I had a big brother. He wasn't really okay. around. But if you have big brother, if, if you know, if you have big brothers and they're the uncles, uncle, mm -hmm. can, uh, uncle can get the job done. One uncle yeah. can get the job done, let alone several uncles. Oh know? yeah, <laughs> the job's gonna get done. I think it's gonna get done right too. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, man. So, so, so now, what have you visited outside the United States? Have you gone? I've never actually been. I was supposed. To, I had a trip planned. I was supposed to go to Europe um, and like do like a study abroad thing, but it was right before COVID hit. COVID hit. Never ended up going. So no. Where would you go? Like, what's the top three? What's like the three countries you have the most interest in going? Uh I would probably want to go to Bali and Bali, maybe South Africa, like Cape Town. And I guess Australia. Australia. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, I saw, man, I, I, my feelings are a little hurt. You know, I saw, I saw some of your tweets early about supporting Israel. What about Israel? We can't get any love. You can't come by and visit. <laughs> We'd love, I, I think there's go love to see. a war going on right now. No, thanks. Nah, okay. <laughs> that's true. No, that's true. I'm right. not okay. trying to get hit by a missile. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a little scary. I want to go too, uh -huh. but I, I understand. I understand. So yeah. <laughs> I get it. So, so what's, uh, what, what's, uh, so like, so what do you think about this coalition of like the, the Nick Fuentes with the Pakistani boyfriend he has, the, you know, the chubby Pakistani kid, like what, like, what do you, from, uh, from the British, the British from the, you no, know, he comes from overseas and he was at that event with Fuentes. Like, do you think that that's like an odd coalition of like, aren't they eventually going to just fight each other i mean i know they, they've gotten together over love fest over defeating jews but like what happens when it's just those two guys like what, what happens? guy what, what's his name i i, I sorry I, i'm so out of the loop i don't even know who you're talking about the the pakistan the chubby guy the pakistani guy uh solomon ahmed or something like that Solimon. oh that guy yeah. yeah i thought it was a little odd i mean, it was like i i thought what happened to the Crusades? I thought, I thought yeah. and, and Muslims were blood enemies, but who knows? All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, the racists of my day were very like black or white. I feel like the mm -hmm. racists of today are very like, it's almost like a Nick Fuentes group. When you see the conference, it's like a DEI. It's like culturally inclusive. You know what I'm saying? It's like so many, like you have like such a wide yeah. variety of diversity there, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Like it, it's, yeah, I, so, I mean, that's uh, what I was saying. I was like, what is going on? I thought this was like, you know, an America first thing. And I'm the, I'm the only representative of America right now. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny, man. Uh, Nick yeah. Fuentes. I mean, there are definitely a bunch of pedophiles in that group. You know, Ali Alexander. I was just with Milo Yiannopoulos, who basically put on Nick Fuentes. He basically made Nick Fuentes' entire mm -hmm. career. Uh, Milo, he's former CEO of Yeezy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just in L.A. with him and, and uh, he, he, you know, he's basically explained to me, Ali Alexander is a real beast. You know, like he, you know, you're talking about women. I mean, men that they've really hurt. They really, really hurt men, young boys. And uh, it's sad to see so many. It's sad that the, the Groypers have so much smoke there for being known as pedophiles. And uh, I think it's I think that when there's so much smoke like that, there's a good chance that it could be true, you mm -hmm. know. And then when you see like some of the some of the guys that they've coalesced with, they they've they've joined with, like the Pakistani from overseas, those guys hate whites, basically. I mean, those guys basically hate the West. Even if Israel was gone, they would still want to take over the West. There, there's no there's no like in Germany, for example, we, there's a political group. It's called Afro Deutschland, AFD. They're becoming very popular. 
I keep telling my wife, I'm like, this group's going to become very big. This group's going to become very big, very big. She's like, no, this group's never going to become big. I'm like, no, this group's going to become big. And now they're getting more and more vote in the elections. And essentially what's going on in Germany is that they're so, which is the most powerful economy in Europe, one, like the fifth, sixth most powerful economy in the world, only about 90 million people in Germany. You got people that are coming from Afghanistan and Syria. They're raping the women. Like they're going around with knives, stabbing people. It's it's surreal, and they hate the culture. They hate the they hate the German culture with passion. They look down on the German culture. They look at the Germans like dogs, basically, and they take and they abuse the resource system while they're there. And I tell my wife, I tell my wife, I'm like, look, the more these guys come in your country, the more the AFD is going to get bigger, because. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a correlation between how these guys come into your country from Afghanistan, from Syria, and they rape your women and they kill your people and they take your social credit welfare system and they disrespect your culture. The more that happens, the more the, the natives, the natives of Deutschland, Germany, they're going to unite, organize and promote the idea of expelling foreigners. And, that, and that's actually becoming a, a, a somewhat popular idea in a homogenous society like Germany. In the United States, anyone can be, anyone can be American, right? My wife can be American. My wife is as Anglo, is, is as Aryan looking as you, you know, blue eyes, brown hair, just like you, same color skin. But, but my wife can be American. No one, would, my wife, when she walks down the street will look more American than me, mm -hmm. you know? But I can't ever be German. I'll always be an Iranian and I'll always be a Jew, you know? So, so, but she can be American. Now that's the thing is that here, there really, you could say there's an American culture, but is it, is there really an American culture? Like Germany, you can say there's an American culture in Israel. You can say there's a Jewish culture, you know, mm -hmm. Jews have been there. You go back to Bethlehem. You go back to when Jesus was my ancestors, when Jesus, Moses, Abraham, those, those, these, these are Jews, you know, that, that lived on this land thousands of years ago, you know, beautiful country. And the thing is, you go to Ireland, native Irish people, you know, but in America, what do you see as the culture? What would you say is the culture in America? Well, I mean, the thing is, we've always been somewhat of a melting pot for a long time. Like we've had people come in for the longest time. So, you know, we, we do have our own culture. Like there's, there's, I'm, I'm Southern. So we have a Southern culture down here, you know, and it's been pretty, fairly pure until a lot of people have been evacuating the cities in the Northern states like New York, and they've been flooding down here. So that's changing the culture um, and making the prices go up. So we're not, we're not a fan of that. But I would say there, there is a culture, you know, we're patriotic. Uh, Americans are pretty fun. They're loud. They're outgoing. You know, you can say all those things, those stereotypes about Americans, but I would say there is a culture, but it's not quite the same uh, as like, you know, a culture in like Norway or per se, because it's, there are so many different kinds of people here. Um, so we've had to just try to make, make a culture out of that, you know? Now I, right now, I think, I think America is like, it's like, land it needs to lie fallow for a few years like we need to be able to seal off the border we don't need any more people coming in because it's it's people coming over from other countries that are like fighting age males you know they they don't have america's best interest at heart who knows who's sending them um so that's a problem but yeah i think there's a culture in america but i think it's definitely getting watered down by having millions and millions of people who don't care about the country flood in yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, it's interesting you talk about stereotypes. Um, racism is built on stereotypes and you can never trust stereotypes. I walked past an Arab guy in the bathroom and he told me he just dropped a bomb in that toilet. I had to remind myself that stereotypes are not real. And he probably meant that as a figure of speech. Mm -hmm. It was a real that's bomb. Awesome. It was a real bomb and, and that whole building blew up and uh, several thousand people died. And the point that occasionally stereotypes um, are actually true. So mm -hmm. be cautious. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Um, you know, racism, they, they want to say racism is this big bad wolf or whatever. But sometimes it's not necessarily that like profiling people. That's not a bad thing necessarily. That can sometimes be a self-defense mechanism. Like if I'm walking down the street by myself at 3 a.m., say I just got, 
out of a nightclub or whatever. And I'm walking down the street and I see some, you know, person who looks like they just got off work in a suit and tie on one side. And then I see some look thug looking person on the other side. I can be try to choose to not be racist and stay on the side with the thug walking down me and risk getting hurt. Or I can side on the, you know, the side of caution and go to the other side. It's one of those things. It's it's self defense. It's an innate, you know, in our in our nature. It's like how gazelles are innately scared of lions because they're used to being eaten by lions. That's not to say every lion's going to eat them, but there's a big possibility there. So I think it's <laughs> I think it's protection and I think it's common sense. So yeah, people wanting to people wanting to shit on everybody for oh you're racist because you're profiling. Maybe that's not my profiling. Maybe it's a self-defense mechanism because we are kind of like animals. We have an animal basic instinct at the end of the day. So it's just self-defense. L- Lily, I, if you could trust me for just 10, uh, maybe maybe it'll take me about 15 seconds. I, I want to do a racism test on you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. So this is a real racism test. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you a racism test. Okay. Close your eyes. And imagine you're walking down the street, someone walks up to you, puts a gun in your face and says, hey, yo, my player, run me your purse, little shorty. Mm -hmm. Now open your eyes. What skin color did you imagine that man had? Black. (laughs) (laughs) What? You're not supposed to laugh. I was serious. Black, obviously, or maybe a wigger. <laughs> no, that was a serious question. <laughs> that was, I was like, I was like, literally trying to do a serious question. All right, okay. All right. That wasn't a very good serious question. <laughs> well, the point is uh, that any race uh, can be criminal, mm-hmm. uh, not just black people. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, so, it, was the, it, was the, it was the vernacular that kind of tipped me off. <laughs> yeah. Although uh, I say broke ass inwards, so maybe I could sound black too. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, man. So, so, uh, so let me ask you. So, before you, you know, this is a good. This is a fun show. It was just fun. Mm-hmm. Having you here, yeah. we actually got more people here than when we started, which is pretty good because it's three forty nine on a Wednesday. Oh afternoon. wow! Okay, it's not even pretty like good. yeah, it's not even like an evening. But no, but this 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 is a shout out to everybody who stopped working and everyone who's degenerated, quit working to look at this stream. Uh, appreciate you. And uh, hey, you know, so Lily, what 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 do you have going on right now? Like, what's the next? Like, what's the next couple things? If you want to do any plugs. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Pleasure to have you, by the way. It's been a pleasure to have you, by the way. Oh yeah, you too, <laughs> or not you too, but it's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah. No, I um, I've just kind of been winging it since this whole thing blew up, and I'm just, you know, plugging away, doing the same thing I've always been doing. So we're just gonna keep on doing that. No plugs, really. Just <laughs> if you yeah. want to follow me on X for kind of offensive shit, then do that. That's cool. Yeah. So even though uh, I would say with the racism test. Uh, you you failed. Um, I, I would say overall it was pretty good conversation. Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> I'm not a good test taker anyway, so I'm not surprised. All right. Well, all right. Well, uh, all right. Well, hey, everybody, please, uh, uh, you know, go go take a look at uh, Lily's uh, X, and uh, it's, it's pretty creative stuff. You know, it's like uh, whether you agree with it or not, you definitely will get a new point of view. She's definitely not doing chat. Uh, G- GPT, where she's just like copying and texting something. Uh, if anyone has any, it's, it's a pretty quiet room. I don't know why, but if anyone has a couple questions you guys want to ask Lily, go ahead. Uh, if not, I mean, uh, I guess uh, I guess I'll ask one more question here. Okay. I think I don't know why guys are very shy. Tyson, what's up, Tyson? California mass game. Come on, guys. I mean, I mean, she. she She's just a girl on a computer screen. She's not going to bite you. You're fine. Don't be gay and not talk. You know, be awkward and just look at the stream, guys. You know? Yeah, I'm pretty harmless. I'm pretty harmless, believe it or not. Yeah, you know. Do, do you get do you get a lot of guys that that DM you that are just – I would imagine you get a lot of fanboys. Uh, yeah, very respectful fanboys. Yeah, so yeah, because, you know, because I think because to see like a – 
politics is sort of like a, it's sort of a sport for people that are not that attractive. You know, right. whereas Hollywood is right. sort of like, oh, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, entertainment is more like, you know, attractive, I would say. Right. Whereas, whereas politics is a little bit more, this app is full of politics. I mean, I, I'm probably one of yeah. the few, I'm straight up like probably one of the few entertainment shows on this app, but. Right. And I noticed other than Russell Brand, my Russell Brand's a pretty boy, you know, mm -hmm. but other than Russell Brand, I mean, and I even Dan Bengino, he's a pretty rough neck guy, you know, but I'm yeah. just saying like other than Dan Bengino, Russell Brand, I feel like politics is sort of, uh, you know, like a dorky, dorky crowd. So I think when they see someone like yeah. you, you pop out. Yeah. No, I definitely don't really fit in in this whole crowd. That's for sure. <laughs> Not to say I'm this really cool person, but I don't quite fit the mold either. Of like, I was never a you know nerdy, you know scholarly person. So, did you get did you get your instant TikTok completely banned? Uh, well, I got my my first one that had gone crazy. That one got banned, and I started a new one. But it's pretty it's pretty like shadow ban like it's you can tell it's off or whatever so I'm, i've pretty much given up on tiktok who cares yeah you know uh i, I will say though i really i want to emphasize this like the way that that you know that ptsd you know trashy veteran lucas gage i really lost a lot of respect for him which i didn't have much respect for him the way he was trashing you and you saw now people say maybe he i don't know if it's true or not but maybe people think that he beats his wife he got arrested and uh, he got arrested, and rightfully so, I think, for whatever he did. I don't know, but I could imagine he did something. This guy basically promotes tweets where he's suggesting violence. He's straight up suggesting violence. He's straight up suggesting gassing Jews. For, like, like, but then he said, then he plays innocent. He plays naive to it. Now, I, I, think to, I think, you know, this is the sort of guy that was attacking you. Well, this to, is be fair, to be fair, Lucas was actually the most nice and fair to me. There was a lot of like fringe people out there that were, you know, rude, not necessarily associated or whatever. But I, I'm, I'm not going to throw him under the bus because he actually, believe it or not, he was actually one of the more uh, wanted to see more of the truth rather than just putting out lies there. So I, I'm not throwing Lucas under the bus. And, and as for the, like the hate, the hate stuff or whatever you can interpret that how you want again i'm like a free speech absolutist so you know it, I, it sucks if somebody may be saying something you know that's rude or mean or you can even think is like inciting violence or whatever i don't really follow i don't really follow him that much so i don't particularly know what he puts out but i think everybody should be able to say whatever they want regardless of how offensive or even violent it is you know no, I mean, I mean, people, you know, you can look at me. I got the, I got the Jew nose from a mile away. You know what I mean? So it's I, when they looked at you and it made fun of your nose. I'm like, nah, you don't got the Jew nose like me. <laughs> you know? I got the Jew nose down a mile. You know, that's no, this but, that DNA is authentic. You know, authentic <laughs> but, man. I'm just a knockoff. Yeah, you know, I, I say that respectfully. You don't really got the Jew nose like me. You know, you see that that thing comes out. I think pops. But <laughs> um, yeah, so some some black people are actually uh, brown. And like, for example, mm -hmm. you're white, but your skin is, is, is red. Where do mm -hmm. you think the terms white and black came from? Um, I'm white and black. <laughs> I'm a red <laughs> skin right now because I'm sunburnt, but yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's just like stereotypes, you know? Yeah. It's just like you're white and you're brown. You're like kind of tan. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, you know, I, no, because I, I tell you, in Germany, they don't even use that. They don't use these words like black and white. It's very, really? uh, no, no. I mean, the racism in, in Germany is more towards, you know, guys that look like me. Yes. But but they don't really think about Mexicans and blacks in Germany. Germany is like, right. as guys like me. But I get I get hate on I get hate on all sides in Germany because I look like I'm an Arab, but I'm not. And, uh, and then the Arabs don't like me because I'm a Jew. So, and I'm mixed. Iran, I'm mixed also. I got the Muslims in my family. Like, I, I, I get fucked You everybody. just can't win. No, I really can't win. Everybody hates me, you know? <laughs> but my, well, my the club. Everybody hates me too, so. Really? <laughs> I, mean, I, I married a pretty liberal German girl, so I, they at least like me. You know, maybe mm -hmm. they take me in as the little, you know, the little Jew boy of the family. The mm -hmm. father takes me around G Germany. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'll be in the room. I'll be the only Jewish guy in the room. I mean, it's all German. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. it's really homogenous society, you know, as, right. at least where, where I'm at. But um, mm -hmm. 
Hey, you know what though, uh, uh, Lily, I this this has been great, man. I, you know, this went way beyond like a half hour, or forty five minutes. But um, <laughs> yeah, so 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 when's like the next show you have, or like the next uh, like which like is there just follow you on X or? Yeah, pretty much. I've got everything linked to to there. Uh, I don't really have a game plan. Again, like I said, I'm just winging it. So we're just seeing. I might get bored of this and, you know, just nuke all my accounts and leave. But who knows? <laughs> we'll see. So so just one last one last question. Oh, hold, hold on. Hold on. There's a question. When I see a beak like that on a person, I think to myself, oh, they're about the, the Jew knows. Well, okay. when I see a beak like that on a person, I think to myself now, there is a person that never needed a can opener. That's <laughs> true. I've saved a lot of money on can overs, to be honest. And it's so someone also asked, um, you have a team creating content or with you, or is it just you? Oh, it's just me. That's why my content's so shitty <laughs> quality. It looks like a, looks like a student art project. <laughs> No, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. So just one, so one last, one last, one last uh, question here. Uh, so where do you think the terms uh, black and white came from? Uh, I would, I mean, <laughs> I think it just comes from you observing things. Like I see a pink flower and that's a pink flower. I'll see a blue sky and that's a blue sky. So I, I think it's just people saw black people and they're like, oh, black. I mean, technically I am black because I can't get sunburn and my dick is really big. So well, good for you. Your wife must be happy. Yeah. She likes chocolate, you know, so it works out <laughs> great. <laughs> works out great. So yeah. hey, everybody, please take, take a, a look at Lily. I'm going to add her X um, link on the, on, on the video description. And I thank you so much, Lily. Thank you for coming. Oh, really. of course. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. All right. Have a good one. All right, everybody. That stream is over. Hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Come on, show your boy some love. I'm like the only, uh, you know, guy here. It feels like, you know, that's uh, not a fanatic. I'm going to show your boy a little bit of love. Subscribe, share this episode, and uh, and please like. I appreciate all of you. And uh, For Liberty says, I'm beyond white. I'm currently paler than Hitler's ghost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, bro. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you. This is amazing. More people than before. Wednesday afternoon. Even though you guys are pretty degenerate to be on here and not be working, I appreciate you. I got love for you. And uh, the next stream is going to be really cool. Might be pulling up uh, near the Trumpies in Palm Beach. So could be uh, on Friday. All right, guys. Much love.